That's the, oh, you are actually gonna put your hand inside of that thing. Good morning, beautiful people. It is a nice, dreary, rainy day. Uh, I, I love rainy days. Uh, I especially love them because it forces me to like slow down and just enjoy the rain, yeah. especially when I'm in the middle of outside projects. Right. So since today is a rain day, it'll probably be done here in a couple hours. But because yeah, of that, we're going to take advantage and we're going to do some inside stuff. Uh, we actually have some more pork bellies that we need to get yes. uh, curing and back in the fridge because we pulled them out last night and they're defrosted now. Right. And so we're going to get them on salt, get our cure on them and get them on their way towards bacon. They'll probably sit in cure for about a week. About a week, yeah. And then next week I'll smoke them. Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of this like slow process of process all the pigs. Right. <laughs> if we dealt with all of the bacon bellies that we have, Oh, we don't have a root our fridge. We don't, for that. yeah. No. It, it is insane. Like, we have so much bacon or yeah. uh, potential bacon. Right. That it's just, There's we no just way. gotta like slow trickle. Yeah. Uh, I can fit about six slabs in the smoker at one time. So that's what we do at a time. We yep. do six slabs, yeah. get them all cured, put them in there, smoke them, slice them. You guys have seen the process before. So we're doing that again. We're gonna get this all seasoned up and, uh, back into the fridge. Yes. Let's do the ones in the sink first. Uh, those ones are still kind of frozen. So okay. We'll do this one first. Do you want to reuse the bags? Yeah, let's, yeah, as long as we've got room. Right. So because we cure these, uh, basically it's just like salt and brown sugar and pepper if we want it. Uh, if the bag that we initially put them in has enough room, we could re-vacuum seal that. That's what we'll do. Um, these can actually sit in cure almost indefinitely. Um, because of the method we're using. Yeah, because yeah. of the method we're using. The method we are using is the uh, equilibrium. equilibrium method. Uh, it basically ensures that if you stick to the recipe, your bacon will always be like perfect, exactly yeah. the way you like it. We know we like what? It's about 2%. 2% salt mm -hmm. for our cure. And half of that is brown sugar and then a sprinkling of black pepper. Yep. We found that's what we like for our bacon. So we just stick with that. It's yeah. pretty, you just measure it, figure out what the weight is, figure out 2% of that as salt. Yep. Get your brown sugar and your pepper, put that, that measurement of cure goes on your bacon and then bag that up and you know that that piece of bacon has as much cure as it needs. Right. We want grams, right? Yes. 2050. Right. Uh, it says it's 2050 grams. 2% uh, of that is 41, so we need 41 grams of salt. Yep. Uh, and then you'll add half of that, so 20 and a half grams yeah. of brown sugar. And then really just the pepper to taste. Yeah, pretty much. And then you have the helper who's tasting the brown sugar to make sure it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the helper. You're the helper. To taste and the about sugar. that much uh, it's good. Black black pepper. Black pepper. Mm -hmm. black pepper. Yeah, that pepper smells good. But pepper? Yeah, that smells really good. Okay, I actually have to trim this because this still has uh, tips. Okay. Now, uh, people are going to call us out and, well, that affects the weight. You are right. Yes, but it does. But towards, like, in our favor. Yeah, Any anywhere between. 2% and like 2.5% is decent bacon. Beyond that, it's a little too salty. We like it on the 2% side, but a little bit more is gonna be okay. So that right there, that was just the, uh, the basically the rib tips that got severed when we were processing. You could leave that in there, but it, it might give the uh, the slicer a hard time. Yeah. Cause it's, it's not quite bone, it's more of collagen. Hard, car cartilage, cartilage, hard yeah. cartilage. So I'm just gonna cut those out. Yeah. That little bit amount of weight is not gonna make the bacon too salty. No. Now I think what's interesting is like, when we first did this, I was like, oh, that's not enough salt. But. It is. It is, it absolutely is. And this, this is a way to have consistent bacon is doing the uh, equilibrium method. Yes, and we do it in the vacuum bags so that it all sucks against the meat so you're not losing anything to like a tote or something that you're laying it in. 
So because the skin is on this, there's no point in seasoning the uh, skin side. And the nice thing about doing it in a vacuum bag is all of that measurement of salt, except for what we just dumped on the counter, stays in there. Yeah. All right. Okay, sister. All right, you ready? Yes. Put this in here. I'll hold it for you. Okay, there we go. I just got it. All right, now we hold this down and push that green button. Push, push. There you go. And just there like go. that. There's one. Easy as that. Yep. Now that will go live in the fridge for at least a week. Yeah. Um, or until we get to it. Yeah. Uh, there's been, there was one, the last batch we did, and there was like one odd belly we missed. Mm -hmm. And so it had been in there for like a month and a half. Yeah. Side by side, it did not taste any saltier than the ones that only had a week in the cure. Yeah. So this method, it's like this is the way to mode. go. All right, next. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Try to get in good light. That's just the rough end. That's the bacon right there. The striation marks or striation lines of uh, different colored meat. You've got the, the rib meat that's a darker red and then the, uh, the bacon meat is like a lighter pink. This is gonna be some good bacon. This one's still kind of frozen, but it'll be okay. This is those feeder pigs we did this past winter. They have some very, very nice bacon. We have been highly impressed very with, happy. <laughs> very happy with their bacon. Uh, some of the best bacon we've had the entire time we've raised oh, pigs. Yes. Like yes. excellent bacon. That one's got a hole. Yeah. Bummer. It'll be okay. All right. There is another batch of bacon. That's actually more than... The last batch? Yeah, that's more than I can fit in the smoker. So. We'll figure it out. We're gonna do what we can do. Right. Honestly, one of the things that I've found doing this is I really, really like cold smoked bacon uh, rather than hot smoked bacon. Yes. And so on the list of things that I wanna build is a smokehouse for doing cold smoking. And with that, we could do seven pigs worth of bacon oh, in one go. That'd be a lot. That would be a... Yeah, our fridge might not be able to do yeah, that, the, <laughs> the The problem we've had is like, we have to do it in batches because that's how much room we have in the fridge. Uh, that's how much room we have in the smoker, all of that stuff. Like it's all, it's, we gotta stage it. Right. So I'm going to haul all this bacon to the fridge and grab our next project. Today is just nice rainy day, project day yeah. in the kitchen. Mom, I found Munchie's Orc Sword. You did you find found Munchie's Orc Sword? Orc sword? Oh, <laughs> I didn't know Orc. <laughs> You're an orc with your little pigtails and apron. You're Most vicious orc. <laughs> Careful. Actually, you can close the door for me and then open the fridge. Oh, that's... So what I have just collected is a whole bunch of, basically it's like all winter's uh, Cured meats. Cured meats, almost yeah. all of them. There's a prosciutto that is out in the fridge that I need to hang up. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that soon, okay. but. Right here, I have a whole bunch of copas. I see a lonza. Uh, basically, all of our uh, delectable cured meats. They've been on cure for... Over a month now. Yeah, like this one right here, big boy. We did that pig in, what was that? The end of October, beginning of November? Beginning of November. It was the first pig we did. Uh, it was kind of my warm up before we did our class. Uh, yeah, so it's been on cure for a long time. So I guess I could talk about these a little bit. They have uh, nice little tags so we can keep track of what they are, when they are, and the, uh, we and the recipe. So like take this one. This is a Copa from an American guinea hog. Uh, let me show you the size difference. <laughs> that is a about 160 pound American guinea hog. This was from a feeder pig, a full-sized like heritage breed, fast-growing pig. Look at the size difference. 
Like, that's crazy. So on these recipes, uh, we've just kind of explored. We've just kind of done what we want. The salt stays about the same. The salt stays about the same for curing meat because you want it. The salt's you know, the important part. The, the salt is what does the curing. So this copa that I'm holding right here is two and a half percent salt by weight. 0.3% uh, pepper, 0.5% cayenne pepper, 0.3% red pepper, and 0.5% garlic. So we wanted something kind of savory, mm -hmm. but hot. Yeah. This would be called a hot copa. So you want to do this one first? Yeah, we can do that. That'll okay. What we are doing with them is uh, they need to be wrapped up in a casing of some kind. Uh, the casing slows down the drying process so they don't like get a super hard dry crust on the outside and then they're still like raw, raw on the inside. Yeah. You want a evenly cured meat to where they're cured throughout and when you slice them, it's the same consistency all the way through. Right. Kind of like these prosciuttos right here. We are almost done with our second one. I can actually show you guys that. So here's our first one. I haven't thrown away the bone yet just cause I don't know, I kind of kind of like looking at it. That one's done. Uh, this one, this one is nearly done. We are eating our way through that one. This one is actually ready. And this one is ready. We have seriously been enjoying these. They're delicious. These ones are actually two years old and because they were so fat, they didn't case harden. Once we got through the outer, outermost crust, they were hard, but the insides are perfect. And so we have, we have steadily been eating through them. Yes. Uh, it's actually kind of shocking how fast we can eat through an entire leg entire prosciutto. These ones we're gonna get tied up, get them hung up and drying. What you need? I was just seeing how big the other ones are. I think I can fit a, that one in a bun. So uh, a beef bung is basically part of the intestines, but it's like basically like a sock. Kind of like an appendix, sort of. Is that um, what it is? It's similar, yeah. I don't think it's exactly appendix, but it's very similar. So it's just shaped, it's shaped like a sock. So it's a tube with the closed bottom. Yeah and um we just use this i mean it's just like pig intestine similar we use this to wrap it so it's it does that slowing down of the drying, drying process right so these are packed in salt so i need to get them rinsed out and washed off get the meat into that and which is a job <laughs> it is a job and we have had ones that are actually too big so i have had to buy some collagen sheeting so, and then you just wrap it like a Christmas present, basically, in a way that there's no open ends. Mm -hmm. And we tie it. I just tie it so it has hanging points and kind of keeps everything together. Tying it kind of shapes it. Yeah. Like I can show you these ones up here. Uh, these are a couple uh, lonzas. Let me get that old leg down. This right here, this is a lonza, and you can see we've tied that up. And it is nearly done drying. A lonza is basically a loin. It's exactly what it sounds like, lonza, loin. It's got a nice fat cap on one side and it's it's a real lean piece. Uh-oh, did it rip? Well, this is one that I'd already used the bottom of, so I trimmed off the top. And, and that's fine, you can still use it because you just kind of like wrap it over. But that's got a big cap on it, so that's not gonna work. That's a bummer. Yeah. It's just like putting a sock on. Yeah, well, this is a fingerless mitten apparently. <laughs> A fingerless mitten. Yeah, like that's the. Oh, you are actually gonna put your hand inside of that thing. I'm putting my hand on the outside. What does it matter? Look, it's a fingerless mitten. <laughs> Cheap thrills. This is what he's married to, guys. <laughs> uh, no. Too short. Yeah, that's more. Okay, let's try this one. How many bungs do you have? There's at least one more in there. It might be two. And then I've got the collagen sheeting, so okay. we should be able to cover so, everything today. So I'm actually pretty excited for this one. We made this one really spicy. You can see all the, the red yeah. pepper all over it. Um, and we've noticed out of the copas we've made thus far, the hot copas are the ones we really, really like. Uh, they don't last long. No, they uh, everybody, don't. everybody reaches for those over the more herbaceous type yeah. seasons. That little one right there, even though it's small, it will dry down to probably like the size of, I don't know, like a pepperoni. Yeah, well, yeah. And we will probably devour it in one sitting. Yeah. Just, okay. you know, between seven people. Right, it, it doesn't go very far. All right, so this is a whole bung. So you can see it's just like a sock. There's the toe. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not gonna like totally flip this inside out, but I'm gonna get this. The idea is to not have a whole lot of air in here. And we do have a sausage pricker that we will prick it over with but basically just putting it on just like a sock. Just 
just like a foot into a sock. Oh, that went relatively easy. Oh, that was a really small copa. Oh, well, that's true. All right, I'm just gonna... Okay, now we're gonna kind of shape this before I trim anything off. All right, so you can see there's some air in there. Like I said, we're gonna prick that later so that there is some airflow and we're not having pockets of air that could cause problems later on. You do want that stuff to be moving around. You don't want just air stuck in there. All right, let me trim this generously. So I will fold it over. And that, tightly fold it over. So when we tie it, that's all gonna get sealed anyways. Oh, and so. by the way, can you guys believe it's already daffodil season again? Oh my gosh. They're so pretty. Went by, there's a spot down by the farmhouse where there's just daffodils that pop up out of the ground. And I walked by and all of a sudden there's color. It was like, it's February. And then, you know, checked my phone and I took pictures of daffodils in February last year and the year before and the year before that. So we're on time. I, we're on time. It's it not, feels like it, it's it, way too early. it just feels like winter was so short this year. It does. Alrighty, this is the, not hard part, just time consuming. And it's a little fiddly. But we're basically going to run lines this way, and then we're gonna run lines all the way around to make like a net, basically. Go this way with our excess. No, not the water. Okay. And then I'm kind of, I'm not quite tying it, I'm just crisscrossing it. And tightening it. So, okay, so I did this. Just doing that. This way, same, and then I'm going in between those, again, crossing, going on that side. I'm just trying to keep it as even as I can, but it's all going to get tied in together anyways. This is the bottom, but I'm going to put a little knot right there just to hold it together and then I'm just gonna go back up these ones all right and then I'm gonna tie it here and loop these to where they're kind of coming under all of them so it's carrying them all the weight together uh, Jack can you get in my little sewing kit in that little one you made me is my orange sewing needle Thanks, sir. So there's a tiny little darning needle. Darning needle. It just makes it easy. All right. Now I'm gonna smush this out again and keep the shape. I'm just kind of, kind of, kind of trying to shape it as we go. I'll adjust these lines as needed so they're all kind of even. I'm pull out quite a bit of string here. Tie one end up here with the top. And on the other end, it's got a big eye. All right. I'm gonna just kind of do about half of it or so just to take up the slack. And then we're just gonna go around and around. But what we're gonna do is some coming under and then we back under. So we're kind of locking it in. And as we pull through, Oh, it kind of stops it from moving. Kind of stops it, okay. And so we're kind of starting at about half an inch or so, and we're just gonna make a web around, and then we're gonna loop around. Once you get to this point, you don't necessarily have to loop it around each string. You could go over every under third, yeah, and just kind of go around. But I like to lock it in on everyone, just so that it like holds its shape better. And you can see it. Oh yeah, ones. like these ones. These ones look excellent. Now, as they dry, they shrink, and all of a sudden the string is not tight anymore, uh, like that one. Right. And, but you can you can kind of see how that's done. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. And the, it's, the point is that the net is there to hold it. So. Yeah, the net supports it, and it kind of yeah. keeps its shape. Tell me that doesn't look like old world delicatessen yeah. Yeah. type stuff. That looks so cool. I, I'm very excited. These are nearly ready. I'm ready to they are cut into them. I want to try them out. Very close, yeah. Okay. So, I did that, like I went under and I went under again. This one I'm actually gonna come the back way. 
on the other side and it's actually gonna lock it at the same time. So I did that one to kind of get it down to the level I needed it. And this one, oops. See, it, it locked itself in that way, okay? Gotcha. So we're coming from the opposite direction, basically. Can you move that pole? Yeah. <laughs> Keep flinging the string into it. And we just go around doing the same thing. And this is the time consuming it part is. that you were talking about. Yep. So, but it's kind of, kind of zen, kind of chill. I can see that. Yeah. Put on some good music or something or YouTube video you want to watch. <laughs> Uh, it's hard to put on some music you like when you're filming yeah. because of copyrights. Right. But yeah, yeah, that's where uh, B-roll comes in. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm down in the bottom. Here's my tied copa. All the way down the bottom, did the same thing, the web. And now I'm just going to run this string. Whoop. Up, back up to the top. I'm just gonna pop it under each of these. Alrighty. I'm just gonna pull this back up here. There it is. Found it. Okay, run it through again just so we have it hooked good. Alright. Now, my top strings and my Tying strings are together, and then I'm just going to tie these ends. Oop. Thank you, sir. So we've now made a knot where we can hang that. All right, and then we're just going to, oh, not like crazy all the way in like a voodoo doll, but just like <laughs> a little bit, just a little bit to prick the membrane of the bung because you can see I have some air bubbles. Maybe you can't see it very well, but there's some air bubbles down here. We don't want the air in there. And this helps the air to flow in and out as it's curing, including the bottom all over because we've got such tight pockets. So we just want to get that air out. We don't have the perfect environment here in the kitchen for these, like for the hands, it's great. Um, ideally you want more humidity and a little bit cooler, but it is what we, it is. We got what we got and it's been working. I mean, we're doing okay. And we live in a fairly humid environment, so it works out. And there's one, here's our tag. We'll keep go the, with that. We keep the tag with it until we start eating it. Um, so what we're going to do is weigh this now before we hang it. We'll write it on here and then we'll know when we've lost the 30% that it's ready. So these will probably take about six months, depending on the size. I mean, this one will take not very long at all. But That'll be ready in two months. Probably, probably. So let's give this away and I'll write that down and we'll, we'll get this hung up. 741. That sounds about right because you added that big old bung. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Minus 30%. 518 grams is our target. Just so we don't have to math as much later. <laughs> it is kind of nice. Like you just pick it up, look for the target weight, yeah. weigh the thing. Uh, Cause like these ones that are hung up, they are almost there, but they feel really, really squishy still. Yeah. Which is good. Cause it means they'll be nice and tender to cut into. Right. Yeah. Uh, but how do you know? Well, yeah. if you're doing it this way and you take care and weigh it, then when you have questions, you just go off the weight. Yeah. It's so tiny. It is so tiny. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give it this nappy. Okay. Okay. All right. Nappy will catch the drips. Okay. And so it begins. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that one's going to fit in a bone. So these are just, so you don't wet these beforehand. Um, you just lay them out, sheets of collagen and you wrap it all the way around with a big overlap and then enough on the end to come over. And then we just do the exact same thing. We just tie it just like we did the other one. So I do want an overlap. So we'll go, that's probably about half actually. Again, trying to keep this a little bit tight and keep the air bubbles out of it, but we will prick this one as well. So it's all good. And then 
Um, it's a little more than I want there. I think the reason I don't like the collagen as much is because it's just not as pretty. It looks like it's wrapped in cellophane. <laughs> but that's all right. Once it's all tied up, it's it's not too bad. Plus, you peel it off before you eat it, you anyways. Do, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, just like you do the bone. Yeah. All right. So this is not very round at the moment. It looks more like a steak. So we're gonna. It smells like a steak. It does smell like a steak. So I'm just gonna kind of round this up a little bit. <clears throat> So, rinse and repeat. Yep, same process. So this is a more like normal size Copa next to the biggest it's guinea hog. Little, it's so cute. That's the size difference. <laughs> now, honestly, I think I like the bungs better because they too. look cooler. Yeah. This honestly looks like it's wrapped in plastic, but it does look pretty cool. These are wrapped in collagen because they wouldn't fit in a bung. So you can see by the time they dry out, it's not too bad. They look all right. And like we said, we cut that all off before we Easier. eat them anyways. Yeah. yeah, so. All right, well, there we go. All right, yay. All right, actually we made this dinner, like a, what, two weeks ago? A week ago? It, do, it yeah. doesn't feel like that long ago. Yeah. It's my fault we're having this dinner again. Right. We are having, I call them flat chicken sandwiches. It's homemade Chick-fil-A. Homemade Chick-fil-A. Flat chicken sandwiches. I call them because I got to flatten them. So. so a whole bunch of chicken breasts and the chicken beet stick. That's right. Flat chicken. Ta-da. <laughs> I guess I should go get a pan and some oil yeah. ready outside and then I'll fry up the chicken. Yay. Now I just need some oil, some fat, uh, oh, hey cat, where'd you come from? You found me. I said fat, not cat. Even though you fit the build. No, Millie is not pregnant. She has not ever since we've had her been pregnant. Uh, if you notice the lopped off ear, that's what they do when they spay and neuter cats out here. Was dinner okay? Okay is not on the menu, it's the best. It's the best. It's the best. It's the best. <laughs> that was really good. And there's enough, I can eat it like three times tomorrow. You can, you can. It was a busy day. It was a busy day. For kind of playing hooky today and not working on my project. Yeah. It was kind of busy. Yeah, we got a lot done though. We did, yeah. there's new meats hanging. Yeah, which is exciting. <laughs> All right, that is gonna do it for us for today. So we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.